Welcome to part 8 of our series of learning how to code in Delphi. In our previous video we learned about input, process and output. We're going to continue with that concept today by doing another example and we're going to create our own calculator. So let's get into it. If you want to work with us um, in this example, so you can go ahead and create a new form. And on your form, I recommend that you have two edit controls. Um, edit boxes there. I've got EDT num1 and EDT num2. There they are. And then you need four buttons. One for the addition, one for the divide, one for the multiply, and one for the subtract. So there's my plus, minus, times, and divide basic buttons. And then you need a place to display the answer. I've got a label here called LBL result looks quite big all I did was I made the font really big and bold so we can put the answers in there so that's how I would design my form if you want to do it with us go ahead and quickly make that form now so let's get stuck into it we've got two edit boxes we're going to expect the user to type in two numbers there and then if we click on this plus button we're going to add those two numbers together and display the result over here so that's the idea behind the program so we're just going to do the plus button for now so we're going to take in the two values add them together and display the result so we're going to double click on the plus button so the btn add button so that we can write the code and here we are so i'm going to if we remind you from the previous lesson we have an input part we have a process part process and we have an output part and the input part was we take the values from the user whatever information they're going to give us or what we need for our calculations and we're going to store them in variables now if you remember we've got two edit controls so we've got two numbers coming in so we're going to pretend that they're integers so over here we're going to declare two variables i'm going to call it r num1 r for integer and r num2 and they are both of type integer okay so there we go so we've got two variables two integers and we're going to start by putting the value from the edit control into our num1 for the first one. So our num1 is changing. And we are changing it to whatever is in EDT num1. That's, that's the name of the edit control. So we want to take whatever's in the edit box and put it into our number. But this edit box is a big edit box. It's got a lot of properties. What property of the edit box is what we need to access what the user has typed in? Do you remember? Do you remember what? How do I get that value inside there? If I click on it, it is the text property. There we go. So we're going to get from the dot text property. Okay, so there we go. Take what's in the text property of this edit box and put it into I num one. However, this is a string. We learned in the last season that is a string value. This is an integer. They do not fit. So we need to convert it from what this is. What is this? This is a string. We want it to become an integer. So we're going to say string to int and then take this edit box's text value which is a string converted from a string to int and then it's going to send it back into i num1 now it fits and now we can do pretty much the exactly the same thing for num2 so i went ahead and did the exact same code there you can see i num2 there's our other variable that we created and it gets the value from edt num2's text property converted from a string to int and there we go we've got our two inputs we can now move to the process Process means we're going to use the values that we've just accumulated or um, we'll have values in and we're going to use it to calculate an answer. So we need a variable that's going to store the answer. So a number, an integer plus an integer will obviously be another integer. So I'm going to create another variable called our answer. And what I'm going to do over here in the process is I'm going to store the answer into our answer. And how do I calculate the addition of these two numbers, the plus of these two numbers? I'm going to say our num1 so whatever's stored in that variable whatever we got from that edit box we're going to add it to whatever we got from the other edit box and that's stored into those two variables so i'm not referring to the edit boxes here i'm restore i'm referring to the variable values because the variable values have what's in those edit boxes so there we go take the value from i num1 take the value from i num2 add them together we're not changing i num1 or i num2 we did that over there we take in the values, add them together, and the answer will be stored in our answer. And there we go. I think that's all the processing we need to do. Now we can move to the output. Output means we want to display the answer. We said we want to display the answer in LBL result. So I'm going to change LBL result to have whatever the answer is. But LBL result is a whole label. There's lots of properties to the label. So if I come here to this label, like what property of the label are we wanting to change? Well, we want to change what's visible to the user, which is the caption. I'm just going to put the answer straight away into it. 
so I'm going to change the caption property of my label you notice that it's different from the edit box the edit box is dot text the labels dot caption and I'm going to put our answer straight into that labels caption ah but there's a problem what's the problem well this is an integer and this is a string it doesn't fit so we must convert it from what it is what is this this is an integer we want it to be a string so I'm going to convert it from int to string so there we go if I do that then it will convert this integer to a string and now it will fit into the caption let's try it out and see if it works I'm going to go to the program there we go it's compiling so there's my program let's come over here I'm going to type in a number let's try in 45 and let's type in 26 if I add those two numbers together if I click on the plus button those two add together is 71 if I give it a different number maybe I want to add 71 plus 26 add and there we go so there we go it's working so now we can move on to the other buttons which is technically going to be exactly the same for the minus button or subtract we're going to just minus the two numbers for the multiply we're going to multiply them and for the divide we're going to divide them so I'm literally going to be copying this code and pasting it into the other button so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go to the minus button and in the minus button I'm going to right click and paste that code but remember I don't have the variables I need to make sure I declare those variables so you can go and copy the variables as well so I'm going to copy the variables and paste the variables in my minus button so this is my subtract button btn subtract and the difference is instead of adding the values we're going to minus them let's try that now so now if I put in two values if I put in 89 and 123 if I add them that's the two numbers add together but if I subtract them negative 34 because obviously that is a bigger number than that so therefore it's a negative answer so there we go it's working I'm gonna do the same now for the multiplication and the divide So yeah, I've done, I've done the multiplication. Just some things to take note of with the multiplication sign. You know, it's in, in your books in mathematics, you normally put like an X. But in the computers, this is the star symbol for multiplication. So the star symbol is above the 8 on your keyboard, probably, if you go shift to 8. Or you can obviously use the number that's around your keypad numbers. There's a, normally a plus or minus, and then a star and a slash for the divide. So those are your symbols for that. So there we go. The other thing I want you to just to take note of if you'll notice that when we declared our variables do you, you see I declared three variables I num one I num two in our answer for all of the buttons but but you said mr. long our variables must be unique yes they must be unique. if we declare them inside the procedure they must be unique for the procedure okay so it's okay if I use that same name in a different procedure so it's okay if I use the same name there um, it doesn't matter as long as I if I've declared it in the procedure as long as I don't have another variable in this procedure with the same name as inum1, then we are okay. So let's run it and see if the multiplication button works now. So let's, oh, it's going all the way there. So if I take two numbers, 24 and 11, if I add them, it's 35. If I subtract them, 13, I'll multiply them. Then I'll assume that's what 24 times 11 is. So there we go. So that's working. We're now going to go to the divide button. Now this is a very special case. So let's take note. I'm going to go up to the divide button. So let's go to the code for it double click on the divide button so we've got two numbers I copied the code and we obviously want to change that to the divide sign which is a slash okay it seems as simple as that but when I run it we have a bit of a problem it says there's a I've, I've literally done everything the same as I did with the previous buttons there's an error what is the error it says there incompatible types integer and extended and if you remember correctly extended was another type of uh, what we refer to was like a decimal number okay so this is why, why are we going to real numbers we only dealing with integers what's the problem here well this is the problem if I take a little note here on the side if I take 9 divided by 3 think about what that answer is think about what 9 divided by 3 is now if you answered 3 then you are wrong because 9 divided by 3 is not 3 I know you might be saying no I'm telling you now 9 divided by 3 is not the answer is not 3. The answer is 3.0. 
Now, I know you might not think that's a diff any different, but it is an answer. It is a decimal number that is the answer. We can't assume that the numbers that they give us will always be perfectly fitting into each other like 9 and 3, where there's no decimal. So we need to take the scenario. What happens if they give 10 divided by 3? Then we know the answer is 3.3333. So that's a decimal answer. So the thing I want you to point out, with the moment you divide, the moment you have that divide symbol, it doesn't matter if you're using integers, but the answer that it stores in must be a real number or a, like a decimal number. So I need to change this divide up a little bit. So let's change it. So I'm going to take this away. We don't need our answer in the divide button. I now need to change another variable of type R answer. Why R answer? Because we're making it a real value. And so now we're going to say R answer equals rnum divided by rnum, rnum1 divided by rnum2. There we go. There's no more error here. So it doesn't matter if they're integers. We can use integers to divide each other. That's fine. But the answer, the moment you divide, always store your answer in a real number. A real meaning a decimal number. So let's run it. But there's still errors. Why? Ah, probably from our output. Let's go to the output. Ah, here we said int to string. Okay, our answer. Now, first of all, there is no our answer anymore. So we must take our answer away and put our answer. Now, the problem isn't with our answer, but the problem is with int to string. It's trying to convert this real number from an integer to a string. Now, we want to convert this, the real number to a string, but it's not an integer. What is it? It's a real number. Now, you might think, well, if there was an int to string, there must be a real to string. And if I type that in, and it goes, it stays on the line. It's not there. Okay, well, another name for a real, another term that they use for decimal numbers is a float. So there isn't a real to string function, but there is a float to string function. Float to string means convert this from a real to a string. Float meaning real. So that's a little trick you must remember. So we, when you divide, your answer must always be stored in a real variable. And when you convert it from a real number to a string, it's float to string. Let's try that now. If I come in, I type in a couple of numbers. Let's try 15 and, or oh, let's try that 10 and 3 example. 10 and 3. So we add the numbers, 13. We subtract them, 7, multiply 30. Now let's click on the divide. There we go. We can see all the decimal numbers. Okay, so there we go. So there it's working. Now, while we're on the topic of real numbers, now obviously we are taking integers and dividing them and times them and so on. What happens if we want this calculator to work with real numbers instead. If I run this program, it only allows integers. If I type in a real number here, so if I go 10.3, that is not an integer number, and I type 7, that's an integer, but if I add it together, then there's going to be a problem. The problem is going to say, hey, this is not a valid integer number. It's going to crash my program. My program doesn't want to let me go on. Your program might actually stop working completely and go, oh, there's a problem and it's crashed. So obviously that's a problem. So we can't have these integers being goal if we type in a real number that can't convert from a string to an int so if we have that scenario so let's go to that plus button let's say i want this plus button to be able to cater for real numbers decimal numbers so instead of integers and an and integer and answer we have to convert everything into real so i'm literally going to have everything's the same so everything's the same as this but instead of R num1 and R num2, we're going to have R num1 and R num2 and R answer because our answer will also be a real number now. now. All of those are reals and we actually don't need the integers anymore. So how does that change? Well, first of all, the names of all these must change. So these are all R's. These are R answer. This is R, R, R num1. This is R num2, and we know that when we display it, we are not doing int to string, but float to string. So we know about those changes. The only other problem is here. We can't convert this edit control from a string to an int if they type in a real number or a decimal number. So we must, if there's a float to string, maybe there's a string to real or string to float. So it's exactly the same. So when we are dealing with integers, 
We want to store int to integer variables. We go from string to int. If we're dealing with real numbers, we go string to float. And if we're dealing with displaying real numbers, we go float to string. And if we were displaying integers, we would int to string. If that makes sense. Okay, so let's try this. This is obviously just the add button. So I'm going to run it and see if it works. So now if I type in here and I give it decimal numbers and add them, now it will work. And even if I give it real or integer numbers, it'll still work because integers can fit into real numbers without them changing. So it doesn't matter if I give it integers. Integers fit into decimal numbers, but decimal numbers do not fit into integers. So we need to make those changes to all of the other buttons to make it work for all types of real numbers. So I've gone ahead and done it to all the buttons. You can see there, they're all reals. They're all reals over here for the divide button, which we did originally. All reals for multiply, all reals for subtract. And we, so we're using string to floats and float to strings. So there we go. So let's try it. So it's going to work for any type of number, whether we use decimals or real or integer number. So 7.2. So if I add those, they work. If I minus them, they work. If I multiply them, they work. And if I divide, they work. Okay. There we go. The only thing we're going to talk now is how do I display to a certain number of decimal places? So when we want to display a real number into a string, for example, if we want to convert it to a to be displayed in a caption of a, of a label, for example, we use the float to string function to convert the, the real number to a string. But that would display it irrespective of how many decimal places. Now we can use another function that will display it to a certain or particular type or number of decimal places. So let's look at this and the, the function that we're going to use is called the float to string f function. Now we would use exactly the same as what we did at the top, but instead of using float to string, we would use float to string f. But float to string f has four values that it needs, four bits of information. So those four things are the arguments that we need, the values that the float to string f needs in order to convert your real number to a string. Now the first value, they are, as you can see, if you've got multiple arguments, multiple bits of information, you separate them by a comma. There you can see. So if I need uh, to convert the first value, and you must put the values in the correct order, the first argument that you need is a real number that you want to convert from a float to a string. Well, it's exactly the same as what we did previously. We wanted to convert our answer or our ANS in this case. Then we want to take that exactly the same. So we just, it's exactly the same as what we did with float to string, except for now we've got multiple arguments after that. So now the second thing that we need is the format. Now we will predominantly use the format as a special keyword in Delphi. You use FF fixed. Now there are lots of different options that you could use. You could use FF number, FF currency, exponent, general. We tend to use FF fixed the majority of the time. If you want to convert it to a currency, in other words, you want to have the like dollar or rand symbol depending on your computer in front of it, you can use the FF currency option instead. So just type FF fixed or FF currency is the majority of the ones that you're going to use. So that's the format. Then you will have a comma followed by, then you will have, for example, two integers so you need two integers now what do those integers mean so integers means whole numbers so you need to give it two whole numbers so the first number i'm not too stressed about the first number if i've got a random like if i've got like a, a, a real number like that the first number determines how many values must be displayed on the left of the decimal value so we don't mind as long as it's a big number it's fine use eight use ten as long as you have a relatively big number that allows all possibilities so that's the, that value over there. The other value, the number two, is how many values must be displayed to the right of the decimal. Now that's the one that's important. Because if you want to display it to two decimal places, then that must be a two. If you want to display it to one decimal, you have a one. If you want it to a whole number, a real, you want to convert a decimal number to just a whole number, you can make it a zero. Or you can make it three or five or however many decimal places you want. So those are the things that you need when you want to convert a float or a real number to a string, but you want to limit the number of decimal places. Let's try it on the divide button here quickly. So we can go float to string F. Now if I typed float to string F, open brackets, do you see it needs four things, a value, a format, and two integers. So we want to convert our answer because that's the name of my variable in this case. 
then we need to give it a format. So I'm type FF fix. Now if I press control space bar, you can see all the different options available. There we go. So we want FF fixed. So you can just type it in like it is. So we want our answer is what we want to convert. Our next argument is FF fixed. Then we need the two integers. So let's make it eight. We don't care how many values in front of the decimal, but we do care about the values behind. I want to make it three, three decimal places, please. So this is only for the divide button. So display to three values after the decimal. So it's a float to string F. Don't forget that. So let's try it. This obviously only works with the divide button. So we know that 10 divided by 3 is 3.3333. But if I do it now with float to string F, if I divide now, it's float, it's 3.333. Why are three threes? Because we said only three decimal values, please. So that's how you can limit how many decimal places are displayed. For more videos on learning how to code, go to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, go to the playlist and you'll find all the topics available to you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.